Okay guys, so this is gonna be the first of a different video. So we're gonna go look at a new lathe for the shop today. So this is a fortune lathe. Um, it's a 2040, so 20 inch swing, 40 inch in Z. Does metric threading, standard threading, which is something that all my lathes are American. So any metric thread repair, I end up having to do in a CNC machine instead of a manual machine. So this is something I'm pretty excited about. It's a really badass metal lathe. So let's get started. So for the people that don't know me, um, I've been a machinist basically my whole life. Um, my father designed uh, numerical control machines, you know, in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, so it's what, you know, gave me the love for equipment and stuff like that. So one cool thing in this video, not only are we going to go pick up a new lathe that I've wanted for years, um, one of the machines that he designed the tool changer for is actually at this building. It's an old Hilliard machine. So I'm going to show you that um, and show you how you move some heavy equipment um, with not so heavy stuff. So in the car in front of me is my buddy John in the wrecker. So we're going to put the flatbed, we're going to put the lathe on that wrecker. We're going to pull it off with bars and skates and get it in the shop so thanks for tagging along okay. time to turn this into this so here we go we just loaded up the lathe lathe's on the truck i want to show this this is cool um so this machine right here is a Hillier mill. So this tool changer, um, my father, who has passed away in the past few years, he actually designed this, you know, years ago. So for you, people that don't know me, you know, I've been in the machine machining industry my whole life. Um, my father designed equipment for NASA, Hillier, the Air Force. Um, it's pretty cool, you know, when he was younger. Uh, he built a bunch of machinery that helped build the Apollo and Gemini space shuttle. Um, some of the equipment that helped build the Sidewinder and Weasel, I believe, um, missiles. Um, and, you know, all different types of um, numerical control machines. He was one of the innovators in numerical control. Um, the machines that, you know, predated um, CNC. So, you know, but this is one of the machines that he had built years ago. So I just thought it was pretty neat to see it. You know, you can see the old controls. Um, this machine's still running, you know, a large table. So, obviously, this is just at the company that I'm buying the other machine, but just wanted to show you. You guys can see some of the other equipment this guy has. It's a pretty badass shop. So, you know, different saws, lathe, a mill that I'm looking at. So this is a nice big boy. 50 taper mill, collet lathe, another CNC lathe, mill. So, let's get this thing on the road and to the house. Your address, buddy. So for all the engines I built for you, you happy? <laughs> <laughs> Different house. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is all that like, ah, don't worry about it. I'll take care of this one. Can I close this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're good. Safe trip, guys. Thanks. Have a good one. All right, time to get on the road with this big bitch. Back in the truck. Behind the tow truck. On the way back to the shop. I can't 
can't wait to start cutting some stuff with this lathe. In 800 feet. So just because of the nature of this video, I'm going to end up kind of commentating on most of this. Most of the videos done at, you know, between 400 and 800 percent fast forward. This process ended up taking us basically two days. So the first day we picked up the machine and moved it into a little outdoor carport I have. The second day we moved it into the shop just because time also we had just had a kind of surprise hurricane which took down tons of trees in our area so we were without power for I, don't know, I think it was five days five or six days so you can hear the generators in the background sorry for that but it was the situation we were in I really needed to pick up this machine and get it set up so as soon as we had power I could start using it so you know the situation we're in. So basically we picked this up on my buddy John. Uh, he works for King Auto. King Auto, I've done work for them for years. They've helped me out, awesome guys. So we picked it up on his flatbed. And now what we are doing is we're just raising the flatbed. We're using a Johnson bar and some one inch metal bars, putting it under the machine to bar roll it down most of the process we have done to move this machine is using one inch metal bars or skates and a Johnson bar or a pipe bar. So we're basically just backing it down with the winch and using the Johnson bar to kind of get it to jump on all the little feet uh, or ridges on the aluminum bed of the flatbed. So you can see us slowly backing it down. Bar rolling machines is one of the easiest ways to move heavy equipment, but you have to be really careful because if you ever get your finger or glove stuck underneath the bar when you're trying to pry it, you're going to lose it. You know, because you're taking all that weight and putting it on a very small point. So here we go, we almost got it in. I think at this point we basically had it flat, so we're trying to get it past the point we're putting a couple pieces of wood so that we can set it on the skates. So, and then one thing I do is I use one inch solid bar for the most part, but depending on the weight of the machine, you can even use PVC. A lot of times I use two inch PVC, you know, you can move. Uh, 2,000 pounds on a couple pieces of PVC, which is kind of surprising. This machine, though, was, I believe, 6,000 pounds, so you got to be kind of careful. And lathes are really dangerous to move because they're top-heavy, and although they're long, they're narrow, so it's very easy to tip them over, and God forbid if that happened, it would be terrible. to push it back on the skates. At this point, luckily, a customer came and he came to give us a hand at the very end. Another Nick. So he came to drop off a manifold that I had to repair for him. You can see the manifold there. Now we just put a couple boards in to make sure that it can all right, so here we go. This is day two. The machine is now outside. We're getting ready to bring it in the shop right there. So the final resting place will be right here. The shop is a total disaster because it's small and I have a whole bunch of big equipment. So we are now gonna take this thing and shove it in there with me my buddy nick right here so hopefully by the end of this we all still have our fingers and the machine's not laying on its side so let's get started so 
here we go. Now we got the skate, so you kind of got to move the skates in the direction you want them to go. So I tap them with a hammer to rotate them and then you use a pry bar. You see me using pieces of wood. Those pieces of wood are just to make sure if it comes off a skate, the machine doesn't fall sideways, as I was saying earlier. There's the Johnson bar, which is basically a long pry bar on wheels. The other issue we were having this whole time is it was really hot outside and the machine was heavy. So if you let it sit for more than, you know, 30 seconds or a minute, the skate started sinking into the asphalt. So here's where I started getting worried that we were going to drop a skate and it was going to come off. So I tried putting the PVC as a little safety, but it just went horribly. So we scrapped that idea and just continued to stay extra careful. So coming up is basically the hardest part, getting over the small ridge going into the garage. And at that point, we basically took the skates off and went on to bars, so which made up for the height difference basically. So going onto a one inch bar inside the garage was almost the same height as the skate on the outside, which made it work pretty easily. So, and this is my buddy Nick that helped with a lot of this move. So, which I'm super grateful. So, and this is just using the Johnson bar to slightly pry it up. You can see the one inch bars underneath the machine. Slow and steady wins the race. The back splash guard just so we can see exactly how much room we need behind the machine when we set it which I was actually surprised how far off the wall we ended up needing to leave the machine but it really ended up working out great so here Johnny and Timmy came over they helped us the last leg of the way so we're mounting the back splash guard so we can see exactly where the machine has to sit. Tightening everything down. And now getting ready to move it into its final resting place. I think this is right around the part where Oh no. At one point we trapped Nick in. There it was. But he was able to squeeze out. And that's basically it. Here we go. So, we got it all set up now. It's up and running. Been machining heads and flywheels on it already. I love the machine. So there's going to be a couple other videos that I do on this machine. You know, unfortunately, this video has taken a while for me to put out. So you've actually seen the 5C collet video that I've already done on this lathe. Just been super busy and haven't had time to edit the videos. So I'm either going to make some type of stand for my CA holders, you know, which I have a bunch. They're not all here. So I'm either going to put a shelf up here, or I know there's a guy on eBay that sells one that mounts to the back of the machine. So I don't know if I'm going to buy it or make it. If for some reason that guy's watching my video, or you know anybody that makes something like that, let them get in contact with me. Uh, I need one. And I, I don't have a problem paying for it. So that I'm going to end up doing. I'm also... Getting ready to do a DRO video on my Van Norman milling machine. So I'm thinking about upgrading this one to also having 
the tailstock have a scale on it and maybe doing a scale on the compound but the compound most likely will be like an individual scale almost like a caliper so but other than that you know this is the lathe i want to thank nick timmy johnny um my buddy john from king auto that helped me pick it up with the rigor i couldn't have moved this machine without everybody's help it shows what you can do with just a couple guys and you know a couple pieces of steel and a pry bar so like always please like share and subscribe the video greatly appreciated you guys have a good day thanks for watching